if you are not reading Kagurabachi, I think you're missing out on an enjoyable story. You're sidestepping something that is very entertaining. The way this manga is visualized, the way it's depicted, the way it's drawn, has a type of energy to it that is really, really addicting. And that's kind of the only way that I can describe it. If I explain the story to you, if I explain the characters, if I explain the abilities, they all seem very surface level. They all seem fine. They operate well. They're not the most interesting or the most unique, but the way it's depicted, the way it's told, the interaction between these characters, their conversations, nothing's revolutionary, but the thing is nothing has to be. There's just something about the way this author is able to weave these characters together, how they show them on the page, makes it feel really lively. Like there is an idea, like there is a result that's trying to be achieved. When you're drawing or writing with that much intent or purpose, so many things can go wrong. But when it goes right, when it meshes together, when it all feels good, you have nothing to worry about. And it creates just like a really fun experience. You could bring this exact same argument, this the exact same description to any other story. Oh, this author's writing with this intent and with this purpose, but it feels very global. It feels very long term. We're doing these things to achieve these things in the future, and that's fine, that's standard. For some reason, Kagurabachi feels a lot more personal, a lot more intimate in these smaller sections. We're trying to do something that matters now, within this moment, and this author is trying to bring this type of result or very purposeful intent to this moment, as of now. Is this coming across clearly, or do I just sound delusional trying to explain this? This story is something that I don't think I can explain properly, and when I was catching Catching up to it and just reading some of the more newer stuff because I was so busy and didn't have a chance to read it, I was about 10 chapters behind. It's very easy to fall in love with and it's easier to continue reading it and just watch this story and this author develop. I understand people have this odd perception, which is very dated now, where it was talked about as a meme and it was hyped up that way before its release, but that's well and truly gone. No one's talking about Kagurabachi now because it's only a meme. It has paid that due paid that respect and opted out for one of the most entertaining early arcs that you could probably get. And I say entertaining, but more so just it's villains. One villain. And I've already talked about that character named Sojo. That dude's impressive, simply. Like where his mind is, where his actions are, how they conflict with the main character Chihiro and where his mind and actions are. They all kind of come together and clash in this really interesting way. To have an early villain leave such an impact on the story is both a blessing and a curse. It gets so many people excited, it shows off how good your writing can be and how flexible and creative you can get, but you're also departing with one of the most entertaining facets of your story, being that villain. People love that villain, I love that villain, and now they're no longer a thing. Eventually that will or idea or just what they represent could come back in different forms. The story is still expanding, it's still growing, and some of the more recent chapters kind of allude to that idea a little bit, which is kind of cool. But so far, everything has been top notch. And while there is parts and moments that feel a little bit slow, a little bit more of a downtime, a little bit more ee ee ooh, it's not as bad as people make it out to be. Now, I don't want to sit here and say it's the most revolutionary thing to exist. Like, you've never read a manga like this. Like, no, no, it's not like that. You have read a manga like this. But again, this is something more of an experience to be enjoyed rather than to be explained. Like, again, I can only explain it a certain way that kind of sounds appealing. But it's when you read it for yourself you kind of start to fall in love with it in a really weird way. And not a lot of stories, I think, have this hook, and I don't know where it is. I don't know where that appeal comes from. Maybe it's just the way the author tends to depict his moments, the way he takes a lot of influence from modern media and modern films and uh, video games, etc. So there's a ton of cultural influence and just representation with how he draws these certain action scenes that feel really modern and recognizable. And that's not a bash on stuff that's dated or old school or whatever it may be, but I feel like he just gets it. Almost like he knows what his readers want. He knows what is entertaining for his story, for his world, and what that means for Kagurabachi. And he continues to not only double down on it, but expand it further, which is crazy because I thought, you know, it's only so far that you can go with these action scenes and have them feel real cinematic and movie-like and whatnot. But then they do more. They double down. They make things bigger and more expansive. And it's really just testing the waters, I would say, with 30 chapters early on for what's to come in the future. 
Originally, I was worried that this wouldn't have enough spine, enough backbone to really push it into the future. I like the idea of enchanted swords, but to me, that wasn't really much of an enticing hook. I like the idea of people wielding those swords and them clashing together, but just trying to retrieve them seems a bit odd. How do you flesh that out a little bit more? How do you make that creative all these different times? But now, as of recent, there has been more story development to flesh out that idea much further, and it is a lot more complicated than you would originally expect. For these reasons, people love Kagurabachi. Its growth, its evolution, its change step by step has been so exciting to witness, and I think it's garnered a very respectable and large amount of audience and readers to really enjoy it, including myself. I find myself interested in watching this author grow and watching their story evolve into something incredible. It already is that at the beginning, but I have to remind myself that they're fresh, they're green, they're very new to the industry, and I believe they're relatively young in comparison to what you're most likely used to for manga authors. I'm talking early to mid-20s potentially, compared to the mid to late 30s that you'd normally get. So this author being young is in this really interesting period of cultural influence that they can just pour into their own work. And you can see it, and it pays off. Being influenced by today's movies and games and directly flowing that back into your work, how you want to approach characters, their designs, their actions, their scenes, it just feels very brilliant and purposeful. Typical to the jump formula, comedy is still heavily used obviously, but I don't find the comedy in here to be all too funny or even jarring, so I guess that's kind of a good thing and a bad thing. If you appreciate the humor, if you enjoy just kind of the downtime, that's fine, but so far for me, don't really care all too much about it yet and that might be just because I'm not all too excited for the main cast of characters yet. I like Shiba, I like Chihiro, the main character, I really like uh, the flame bone girl, what was her name, Hiyugi, I think she has a ton of personality. I'm enjoying the Sazanami kid which I think his name is Hakuri and then obviously you have Cha and Hinao. There's a bit of a blend within that main cast, like obviously they're kind of the most consistent ones currently and that can be very flexible on who you're obviously dealing with, but Chihiro steals a lot of their personality, mostly because he starts from being this real dark, mysterious, edgy, brooding type of person, very similar to Batman in a way, right? But then he starts to open up bit by bit. He starts to talk a bit more. He starts to be a bit more jokey and a bit more crafty and a bit more creative. So he's not always on edge 24-7. And I kind of like that natural unfolding of his character when he's talking with others. Of course, we're still very early and having quite a number of characters now stand out bit by bit is a really good start. They're not the most recognizable or the most appreciated, but it is a start nonetheless. And there's a lot of work that can easily be done with them over time. My personal appreciation right now, Hiyuki, because even though they've been in like a total of four or five chapters, I think their personality is really intoxicating, very different to what the story is representing, and would match just perfectly with Chihiro. They're kind of like the same but opposites of like their respected hatred and anger and personality, but they also share kind of like a similar brain rot. Like they're very oddly intertwined thematically, and I like the representation of them working together right now. I think it's great, especially for this auction and how complicated it can actually get. I guess what really concerns me is the future. I love this story, I love these characters, I like where they're going and what they're doing and all of these different ideas that are um, being written in that expand the universe little by little. It's respectful, it's tasteful, it's not jarring in any way. I enjoy that. The future looks brighter than ever, it's just the trust that you have for a company like Moon and Jump. Weekly stories are so difficult to come by nowadays that are successful, that don't get axed very early, and so it's hard to love a story like Kagurabachi early on because you never know if it's going to get axed. I don't even think it will. I think it's doing well. I think it's selling well, but at the same time, the under concern is just weekly burnout. This is a young author. They are in a prime position to write the story incredibly well and do what they need to do, and I, I think they will, but it's just scary knowing that the weekly experience is becoming so much more, so much more has to be given, so much more has to be done uh, to really stick around and stay within this industry and it burns through authors just like that. 
So when authors challenge that and move beyond it and try and do things so differently to what they normally do, you get something very special.